Hello there and welcome to Astronomy at Reed High School. My name is Mr. Clapp and I'll be the instructor this year. Uh, whether you're doing a distance learning model, a full time in school or the hybrid model, uh, I will be your instructor and this will be the course. I think we've got a good plan. Um, I know that astronomy and everything else is a little bit different this year, um, but uh, I believe there can be a really good amount of stuff going on with working at school and at home. Um, and so I'm really hopeful for that. So I want to introduce you to our course, our expectations, how things are going to go this year. Uh, so that you're best set up for success. So let me give you a little bit of an idea of who I am. Um, I have a BS in wildlife biology from UC Davis, and I also have a master's in um, science from UNR in education psychology. So I've got a little bit of schooling. Uh, you'll notice very clearly none of that's astronomy, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, this is my 17th year teaching, so I've been around for a while. I'm getting old here. Uh, that said, uh, it's about my seventh year at Reed. Before that, I was in middle school. I taught about the Poli and O'Brien. Um, and for those of you that don't know, I'm also the head wrestling coach here at Reed. So if you want to wrestle, um, I'm happy to talk to you about that. Would love to have you out. Hopefully, we already have some wrestlers in this class. Um, as far as astronomy goes, I have taught practical astronomy at UC Davis. I took a great class. Um, when I was there and then actually got to teach it um, for most of the time that I was in school. So my practical skills with telescopes and naked eye astronomy are pretty good. Um, I also had a chance to develop uh, astronomy curricula for several different programs, uh, both at UC Davis uh, for a wilderness therapy program and also within the district here um, at, at um, within the district here as well. Um, I used to give star talks as a ranger for the Indian National Forest. I've given star talks all around the West Coast um, in wonderful, wonderful skies. Um, so I know a bunch of stories and that kind of stuff too. So, um, and like I mentioned before, I've also uh, taught astronomy for a few years here and helped develop the curriculum here in the district. So I feel pretty confident in astronomy. I think it's a neat course um, and should be a chance for us to learn some stuff we wouldn't get to otherwise. Okay, our schedule. So to begin with, we certainly understand the schedule this year is kind of complicated. Um, it's different if you're on an A schedule or a B, or if you're in an odd class or even. Seventh period is a whole other thing. And then of course, there are those of you in a distance model. So I'm sure you've heard about this from a couple of different folks, and I'm sure that you've heard about it in your other classes, but I figured I'd go over it again just to make sure it's very clear uh, with regards to this class. So for those of you on the A group or the blue group, uh, the expectation is you have two days of a course in a row. So you'll have, in our case, two days of astronomy, one day in person, and then one day at home. Each of them will be just over 100 minutes, um, and you're expected to spend that time focused on astronomy. Uh, I know this is a big shift for many of you that, that didn't haven't done much work at home. With this hybrid model, the expectation is that for that day of astronomy that you're at home, uh, you still belong to me and you still are expected to do astronomy. So you have 105 minutes of astronomy work to do in class and then around 105 minutes to do at home the next day. After those two days, you'll move on to two courses that are not astronomy. You'll move on to what your second, fourth, or first, third, whatever courses it is. You'll go through those for two days and then you come back to two days of astronomy. Um, this may be where astronomy is at the beginning of the week or the middle, or it could even start on a Friday and come to a Monday. Um, it's going to vary based on where we are in the schedule. But essentially, you get two days of astronomy, two days off to work on other classes, and then two days of astronomy again. And that'll continue throughout the year while we're on the hybrid model. It's a little different for those of you on the B group. Uh, the B group, you actually get your in-home instruction first, and then you get your astronomy. So in practice, what's really going to happen is you'll get your in-home instruction, you'll get two days of another course or your other courses, and then you get your day of regular astronomy instruction. The reality though is we'll be providing you instruction that you'll take two days off from while you're doing your other classes, and then you'll work on it at home. So for the most part, what's going to happen for you B folks is you'll have your instruction, two days to work on other material, and then the day that you're supposed to work on our material at home. I know that's a little bit more complicated. Um, I'm happy to explain it more in email if that's going to be helpful to you. To help us out a little bit, um, I'm also going to be offering office hours for those days when you're not in school and for those of you that are on a full-time distance learning model. Um, office hours will be from 1230 to 130, three days a week, um, sorry, four days a week, and so that'll be an opportunity for you to check in um, and work with us. So if you have a problem at home and you're on a full-time distance model, this is when you'll be connect, connecting in with me. Um, 
or at least this is when you have an opportunity to get some extra help. And for those of you that are here on the hybrid model, this is your time to check in if you need extra help. The big difference to this, and this is really actually one of the biggest things that I see as an advantage in astronomy. You know, when we're stuck teaching astronomy during the daytime, we can't do a lot of the stuff that we want to. Um, now that we're setting up to have distance learning and a hybrid model, it makes sense to do some of our instruction at night. So the expectation will be that you attend our required um, astronomy courses Wednesday evenings. These required courses are an expectation of the class. If you can't make it because of a work schedule or something, um, we need to have a conversation about how you can meet those expectations, um, doing extra assignments for me or something like that. But generally, you're taking an astronomy class, you need to be able to dedicate some time at night. Um, we'll be going out individually um, with our phones and our apps, and we'll be learning about astronomy as we see it in the night sky. We've got some great astronomy going on right now. Jupiter and Saturn are up. Uh, it's a beautiful sky. Um, so there's some really good opportunities there. We're going to be expecting that you attend that. What that means is, since you are giving me an hour of your time Wednesday evenings, every Wednesday, that I won't expect a full 100 minutes of your time at, at home. I'll expect a little bit less of you um, in terms of your at-home work because you're giving me some effectively in-class distance learning time. Um, we'll, we can talk about any concerns you have with that schedule, but I think it's really going to be good for us. Um, and that way we can do some real honest astronomy lab work. You in seventh period, your world's a little different because you actually have astronomy every single day. You'll have astronomy for me um, in person, and then you're at home, and then you're in person, and then you're at home, um, and it's every single day. Not too complicated. There's no gaps where you just have astronomy or where you just have other courses. For those of you on the A schedule, you'll have your in-person you'll have your in-person instruction, and then at home. For those of you on the B, at home, and then in person. Uh, not a huge difference. Uh, you're going to be working on projects anyway, but this gives you a little bit of a layout of how the class is going to go. Um, just like everybody else, you have those optional office hours, and you're also expected to come to those classes on Wednesdays. Um, and for those classes on Wednesdays, I'll give you time off where you don't have to deal with me so much um, for an in-person, for, for, sorry, um, from a distance standpoint. So I know it's confusing, um, but again, I think we'll get the flow of it and it'll make more sense to us distance model, um, and we do have a good number of students who are electing to do full-time distance learning. Um, it's pretty simple, and it's a lot like the A model. You're going to have two consecutive days of astronomy curriculum, both at home, um, much like the A group, and then you're going to have two days of other courses without astronomy. So you'll have two days of astronomy, two days without. For those of you in seventh period, you'll just have astronomy every single day, um, just in a distance learning environment. So again, the expectation, whether you're at home or you're at school, you give us the time so we can give you instruction um, and, and you'll learn the astronomy curriculum. It's going to be challenging, I know, to figure out early on, but I think we'll get it, and I think it's actually going to give us a chance to do some evening stuff. For those of you on a distance curriculum, uh, we do have the optional office hours. We do have the required classes on Wednesday nights, but importantly, because we need to check in with you too, we're going to have mandatory check-ins on Mondays at 2 p.m. So um, on two, at 2 p.m. on Mondays, you're expected to log on to Zoom, um, and we may change that to Teams, but for now at Zoom, and have a conversation with us about how your day's going, what your plans are, um, and just a face-to-face -face check in once a week. So there are two times when I absolutely need you, um, Monday and Wednesday, and then other than that, you can sort of work around your own schedule, but there is a, there is a time that I expect you to be committing, 100 minutes a day when you have my class. Moving on, um, how we're going to structure this class is going to be very different, at least while we're during, doing the hybrid model. We're going to be focused on what we call engagements, which are these relatively long-term projects that'll take about a month at a time. Um, as you go through the engagements, when you finish the engagement, you'll be submitting a portfolio, and that portfolio will be the bulk of what gets graded. We will have tests as well, um, and they will put, they will put play a substantial role in terms of your grading, but this portfolio is gonna be a big part of what your grade ends up being. While we're going through the engagements, we'll also engage in some relatively minor tasks that'll be due on Sunday nights. So your tasks are like mini projects throughout the engagement. So for example, 
as part of your engagement, you might be doing a, an animated video of planetary motion. One of your tasks might be submitting a form on a video that I posted or something like that. The tasks will be relatively small. Mo the bulk of your grade will be your portfolio and your exams. Just to give you an idea, our very first engagement is going to be effectively learning how to do hybrid and distance learning. We're not going to learn much astronomy to start. Um, our push is going to be to make sure you understand how this process works. So the way it'll work, um, you're actually going to be submitting four separate things. You're going to submit an introduction video, um, and we'll give you the instruction for how to do that. You're going to create a PowerPoint on, um, on a topic, on a constellation that you find interesting. You're going to create a brief animation, uh, whether it's stop motion or time lapse or um, using an animation studio, you'll be creating um, a video there. And then finally, you'll be creating a how-to video to teach us how to do some of the materials that you're doing, the animation stuff. All of these are going to be useful throughout the rest of the year, and we want to make sure you understand how to do them right out the gate. Whether we all go to distance learning or we're, we're sitting here in the hybrid model, these are all going to be skills we're going to need. We'll also be spending a lot of our time learning how to log into Teams, submit assignments, get them graded, submit forms, comment on stuff. Um, it's going to be fun, but it's not going to be super astronomy based to the, for the beginning. We're going to make sure we know what's going on. How the actual course goes, like I said, we're going to start out our year with this hybrid distance tools um, and establishing norms for a hybrid or distance model. From there, we actually will move through astronomy. Um, we're going to start with naked eye astronomy or classical astronomy. Um, I like to call it catching up with a caveman, making sure that we know what someone a thousand years ago would know about astronomy. I think this is one of the more interesting and fun parts of the class, um, just understanding where the sun moves, what we see with the sky, um, and making sure we understand basic, basic, basic astronomy. Then we'll sort of move through human history. From there, we'll move on to what we call Renaissance astronomy, where we'll learn how we know that the Earth is round, how we know that the Earth rotates, and how we know the Earth revolves around the sun, or what evidence we have for those things. We'll also spend some time starting to get into the math of astronomy that Galileo and Newton and Kepler and Brahe and others uh, brought to us. So it'll be an interesting time there, um, moving out of just what we see to a little bit of why we see it. From there, that should pretty much get us to the end of the semester. We should have a little planets unit at the very end where we're learning about the planets. Makes sense when talking about Newton and Kepler. And then to start the next semester, again, we don't really know if we're going to be on hybrid or distance or whatever at that point. Um, we'll start our year learning about telescopes, uh, measuring distance in astronomy, and how we use light to tell a lot about stars, or what's called um, astronomical spectra or emission spectra. We'll move from that on to learning about the evolution or the lives of stars, um, how galaxies work, and then how the origin of the universe began. Um, so this will be a long process that will take us probably a few months, talking about stars, then galaxies and nebula, and then on to the origin of the universe itself. And we'll finish our year with a little bit about space exploration and extraterrestrial life. So this is a good year. There's a lot covered in this course, um, and I think you'll find it really interesting and conducive to a distance environment or a hybrid environment. Okay, um, as far as routines and expectations, these are, you know, you've gone over these with a lot of your teachers. Many of them are school-wide. Uh, we are fortunate in this class, since it's a science classroom, that we have sinks. So one of our expectations is as you come in, um, if you are here on the hybrid model, that you wash your hands, um, you get out your supplies, and then you get started on your daily goal, which is something you'll be really familiar with as we go on. Um, it's expected that you um, continue to have social distancing between you and your peers and me, um, and also that you're working on your own independently. I'll give you some instruction. We'll spend most of the time working on your own. And then as we exit the class, you'll, you'll be filling out another form and then um, cleaning up before you go. Um, there's not much equipment that we're going to be using in astronomy that's not your own. Um, so there's not a huge issue with cleaning up stuff. Uh, when we get to the spring, hopefully we'll have a chance to use some telescopes and do some actual labs, in which case we'll have to be cleaning the equipment as we go. Um, in the meantime, um, when we do use any equipment, whether it's a star wheel or um, just a model, it's important that you are taking good practices and wiping those things down so others can use them. Turning in work. Nearly all of your work in this class will be turned in on Teams and online. If there are any of you who don't have access to a phone and Teams or a laptop, um, even better, um, we're going to have to come up with some alternatives. Uh, given our current environment, it's just going to be better for us to be doing things digitally. 
Um, uh, you'll have your name and your class number, which you'll put on stuff like the good old days. Um, but for the most part, you're just going to be clicking turned in and making sure assignments are turned in on Teams. Um, your tasks, the little small parts of your projects, will be due by Sunday evenings, unless otherwise spoken about. And your portfolios will be due at the end of engagements. Our first portfolio is due September 14th, um, and other ones will be due at given dates throughout. We'll let you know those when we start the engagements. Um, as far as phones go, um, it's really an expectation that you have a phone. I know some of you may not at this point. If you have a laptop, that's great, or a phone, but being able to access digital material in class is just a world that we're living in right now. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the opportunity to get everybody um, something from the school, so having a phone is a really big resource for you. So I'll bring chargers in so you have a chance to make sure your phone is charged, and if it's not, you can charge it during our class. Um, but the expectation is you appropriately use your phones while you're in this class. Bathroom breaks, uh, like the rest of the school, will be coordinated, um, and interacting with your peers should be limited. I know it's going to be hard. I know we're excited to see each other, um, but these are all going to be consistent across the school, so you should be pretty familiar with them. Supplies for this class. So supplies are going to be different than they've been in any class you've ever been in. Um, if you have a personal laptop, I so recommend you bring it to school. I know that there's some challenges with that, um, but I think as you'll find that the way things are going with our distance learning and working in teams, this is gonna be a benefit to you. We know many of you don't have them. We do have some at school. There are possibilities there, um, but if you have one, bringing it is probably a good thing to start doing. Otherwise, um, working with your phone will be the way that we'll be spending most of our time interacting with material. Your phone, you're gonna to need to have some specific apps on those phones. Um, they are as follows. Uh, we are going to be using Remind to talk about some of our courses. There's potential we'll cancel a Wednesday evening if it's cloudy. There's also potential that I need to get a hold of you for something else or tell you about a neat astronomical event. You're going to need to have Remind on your phones. Um, obviously, Teams, we're going to work with that the entire time, so downloading that app as well. Stop Motion Studio will be making stop motion and time lapse animations, and so you're going to want this on your phones as well. Screencast-O-Matic is a neat piece of software that allows you to record the screen um, and also record using your webcam, kind of like I'm doing now. Um, and this is a great piece of software that allows you to do it. There's a freeware version that gives you some access. And then as you, if you decide to pay for um, the year-long access, I think it's 20 or 30 bucks for the year, and you can get a whole lot of access to editing software, which is great. But the freeware one is the only expectation. Um, Animaker is a similar idea. We're going to make some animations throughout the course, and this will be helpful to you too. It's another freeware app. And finally, Stellarium. Stellarium is an astronomy-based application that you're absolutely going to want on your phone. Um, we'll talk about these. We'll practice them. We'll, you'll learn how to use them in class, and we'll certainly work with them on those Wednesdays. Um, but this is a great app that allows us to find objects in the sky and use our phone to track them. There's a freeware version. There's a plus version that's a few bucks. Um, if you want to get the plus version, but all again, all of these apps are free. Um, when I talk about the expectations, if you want to download a fancier version of them, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, I do expect you to have a notebook and a pen or pencil when you come to class. We won't use them too much, but it may be helpful during our lectures when you're when we're learning things for you to use your notebook and pen or pencil. And I really like these four color clicky pens, the ones that are black, green, yellow, and blue. Sorry, black, green, blue, and red. Um, for taking notes. And if you have one of those, that's going to be helpful to you as well. As far as um, resources go, uh, we will not have textbooks in this course. Uh, textbooks um, aren't really useful right now anyway, and most of our stuff is going to be online. You're going to be just fine without a textbook. Um, that said, your office hours are one of the biggest resources if you're struggling. Uh, again, they're, they're available four days a week, so checking in and being part of those office hour things will help you. Um, I'm also available on Remind nearly always, so you can send me individual reminds, something we'll be practicing the first week. So you can send me individual messages, and I'll respond pretty, pretty frequently. Um, email, of course, works. I have a Washoe County email that you can use. Um, you can also come in before and after school. We have some limitations on that at the very beginning of the year, um, but if you need extra help, you can come into my class. Um, and then finally, your peers, of course, are resources. Obviously, social distancing is important, but you know, organizing Zoom calls and chats with your peers uh, or talking to them in class from a distance is perfectly appropriate. 
think we have some very specific values with regards to this class, but I do think they're ones that could apply anywhere. Number one, do your job. I know that we've got some very interesting circumstances here with uh, COVID and you not being at school every day. I know last spring things were very different. That said, the expectation is you do your work. It's going to be a big challenge for a lot of us to get used to doing work at home. Um, but that's something that's expected and that's part of what's going on. So do your job. Your job is to learn astronomy. Your job is to learn the material that we present to you. If you struggle with it, your job is to reach out and figure out how to get it done. You need to be independent. You need to be focused on your job. I will help. That's my job. I'll provide instruction. I'll provide support. And together we'll get you to a place where you know astronomy. But it doesn't help if you don't do your job. So again, your focus is learning right now and, and putting, putting your best leg forward. And I'm hoping that you'll do that. If you put your time in, you're going to be successful in this class. That said, there are going to be some moments in this class where you're challenged. This course isn't going to be easy. There's some challenging concepts, some challenging math, um, and some challenging expectations on your time. Um, those all said, if you, if you, when you're struggling, if you respond well by pushing through it and finding those answers, in the end, you're going to know about astronomy and you're going to have a whole bunch of skills you didn't have beforehand. So be willing to embrace that struggle. Be willing to embrace that challenge. Astronomy is a history of people that have been confronted with huge challenges and they've overcome them from early astronomers discovering out how the world works to astronauts um, being launched into space and engineers designing the materials for them to do it. There's a lot of challenge in astronomy. Um, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson talked about how some of these things in life we do because they're hard, not because they're easy. And astronomy certainly meets that. Finally, um, it really doesn't matter to me how intelligent you are. Um, certainly those of you who are, are gifted with, with supreme intelligence um, have an advantage over some of the rest of us, but mostly the thing that's gonna matter in terms of your success, both in this class and in life, is how hard you're willing to work. If you put in the work, you're gonna be successful in this class, I promise. I'll help you. And for those of you that struggle, I'll help you more, but we're gonna figure it out. But realize that effort is the key to your success. It's not ability. You need to do your work. And if you do your work, you're going to be successful. If you're confused, you might have to work a little harder. And I'll help. But that's how we're going to get there. So realize your effort is what's important. Do your job. Struggle and embrace it. And, and be willing to put forth effort. And you're going to have success. Finally, if you have any questions, um, you can always message me on Remind. Um, you can text me, you can email me, you can send something on Teams. I want to clear those up because it's a weird year and I want to make sure that we're all ready for this, this the challenges ahead of us. I thank you so much for your time and your energy um, and I thank you for looking. It's going to be a great year. It's certainly going to be a different one. Welcome to astronomy and welcome to my class.